Hey there, YouTube. It's a 13 Dragon Blade. <clears throat> now, a lot of people have been asking me for different profiles on uh, the Yu Gi Oh forums that I've been going on lately. And I've been, you know, trying to play with a different amount of decks, and obviously there was one that a lot of people were wondering why I haven't posted on YouTube yet. <clears throat> it's Super Heavy Samurais. I have been playing with the deck for a while. I like it. It's somewhat consistent. It's a very strange deck. All monsters and no spells and traps are deal. Of course you can play spells and traps in the deck that can be viable to you, but going from a straight perspective, you want to have as much monsters as possible and minimal spells and traps. <clears throat> so we're just going to go into the bulk, and I'll explain as I go along, as I do all of my deck profiles, at least for the new ones. Three Super Heavy Samurai Big Benki. He makes all of your Super Heavy Samurai's attack and defense mode, which is very valuable. And you get to apply the defense instead of their attack. So, the good news here is, he's a 35 beater. A lot of things that he can get over, especially Construct and other things like that. Problem is that uh, you're going to be special summoning this guy, so obviously not Construct, but other things he can run over. So you run him at 3 because it's sort of mandatory. Then you run 3 of the important guy. 3 Flutist. Super Heavy Samurai Flutist is very important. Uh, you basically can normal summon him. And you can tribute him off to special summon any Super Heavy Samurai monster from your hand. His effect is very relevant. Uh, has little to no attack and defense, but it doesn't matter. So you tribute him off while he's on the field to special summon... Another Super Heavy Samurai of your choice from your hand. And then, while he's in the graveyard, you can banish him from the graveyard, and you can, if your Super Heavy Samurai is targeted by a card or effect, you banish him from the graveyard, and he negates that effect and destroys it. So it's very good, and you have to run him at 3. It's sort of mandatory to run him at 3, too. There's going to be a lot of 3 copies here. 3 Super Heavy Samurai Trumpeter. He's your tuner. He is a level 2. His first effect, it's pretty long, I'm going to read it. Uh, if you control no spells or traps in your graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. After this card was special summoned this way, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except super heavy samurai monsters. If this card is tributed for a tribute summon of a super heavy samurai monster and sent to the graveyard, you can special. if you have no spells and traps in your grave, you can special him back again. So usually... Uh, sometimes I've seen people tribute one of him off, or tribute two of him off, and bring out Big Benki uh, that way. Uh, it's also, you know, I mean, you can do it that way, there's nothing stopping you from it, surely, but I'd prefer just bringing him out through his first effect, because his first effect is still very relevant. Then we run three of this guy, because he's actually one of my favorites, and I will go back into the effect. Your controls no, uh, two or more monsters, actually. And you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can target one level 4 or lower Super Heavy Samurai monster in your graveyard, except himself, and special summon that target in defense position. Again, very relevant. He's like a wolf bark. Uh, you have to run him at 3, because this entire deck is basically monsters. There's very few spells and traps that you can run. 3, Super Heavy Samurai Blue, Bra uh, Blue Brawler. His effect is great, he can't be destroyed by battle. When he's normal or special summoned, you can turn him to defense. So he's got 2,000 defense, and uh, he can't be destroyed by battle. So he's just a better version of Spirit Reaper. He's also level 4, which means you can search him out with your Gigant whenever you need to. Always good to have him at 3, he's one of the really good ones. Then we have, these are the equip cards. Um, well, some of the equip cards. 3, Super Heavy Samurai Soul Piercer. It's the Searcher. If it's sent from the field to the graveyard, you get to search any Super Heavy Samurai except himself from your deck to your hand. I usually use it to search for Trumpeter or for the Flutist if I have Benki. Or if I have uh, the need to, I'm in the search for Scales. If you get Scales going along with this guy and a Trumpeter, you can basically make uh, Super Heavy Samurai Sinswano and start looping him from your graveyard back and just have... Keep searching scales and make a consistent rank 4 engine. So, 
again, very useful to have. And if he's equipped to a super heavy samurai, you can make it pierce. If you equip this to Benki, that equals a lot of damage. Then we have two super heavy samurai soul fire suit. I just think two is enough because this, the meta is mostly bouncing stuff right now. Bouncing and banishing is a thing right now, especially with Cypherms. Don't even get me started. I hate that deck more than Quilly now, and that's saying a lot. Anyway, you can discard this card, and your Super Heavy Samurai loses 800 defense, which is kind of irrelevant, but it can't be destroyed by battle or court effects that turn. And this other effect is also kind of relevant. You can attach it onto a Super Heavy Samurai and make it a level 5, which I guess is okay, but I don't play the rank 5 variant. So it's kind of meh to me. Two Super Heavy Samurai Soul Buster Gauntlet. Very good card. If your Super Heavy Samurai in defense position is attacked or is uh, attacks or is attacked by a monster, you can drop this guy and double its attack. If you're attacking with Banky, that's seven thousand on the board already. So dropping this guy usually means game. It does a lot of damage and can get in there. The monster is really big. Two, or actually, no, just one. These are the one of Super uh, super Heavy Samurais that I run. One uh, Super Heavy Samurai Battle Ball. Its effect is kind of good. When you uh, summon it, you can target a level 4 lower monster your opponent controls, and you can use it for a Super Heavy Samurai Synchro Summon. So, if you know a deck that plays a lot of dorky rank 4s, you can just exploit that with this card. I only run him at 1 because he's not really as good as Trumpeter, but he's okay. Super Heavy Samurai, uh, Big Wajari, or Big Rogery. Uh, good, it's a Cyber Dragon, it can special itself, and it's worth two tributes, so if you have Big Benki and this guy in your hand, you can normal summon Big Benki and still get him on the board. I only run him at one, though, because he's not really as good as the other Super Heavies. Now this guy is another equip card, or another hand trap, I should say. Most of them are hand traps, the Soul Piercer and the other ones are equip cards. Uh, this guy is good though, if you discard him when your Super Heavy Samurai in defense position dies, you can special summon a Super Heavy Samurai in defense position. His other effect is why I like him though, he can't be destroyed by battle, so it gives him another target to search with Soul Piercer that can't be destroyed by battle. So you have three Super Heavy Samurai cards. Four Super Heavy Samurai targets that you can search off of Soul Piercer and not have to worry about being destroyed by battle. Alright, so these are the non Super Heavy Samurai cards. These are just mostly texts that people use. Three Giant Rat. All of the Super Heavy Samurais can be special summoned through this guy. So you can bring out a Penki if this dies, which is pretty stupid. Uh, and Benki can use his effect to change him immediately to defense, and then they have to worry. About a 35 beater punching him every turn. It's not fun, but this guy's good to run at 3 because he helps your monsters float. Then you run 3 Swift Scarecrow. You just gotta stop that battle face sometimes. There's a lot of decks that OTK now, so this is a really good card. And lastly, one Gen X ally, Birdman, because it is a machine deck and he is a very good tuner. So the way that I figure it, run him at 1. Alright, that's it for the monsters. It's a big, hefty count. Now, for the spell I don't have, it's a proxy right now. There's three Galaxy Cyclones. That's the only spell that I see viable to run, because the entire deck doesn't really have to worry um, about its effect. You use its first effect to destroy a set card your opponent controls, and you use its other effect to destroy a face-up card your opponent controls. And it's also very good if you know they have Vanities and Skill Drain and just a lot of annoying board presence cards that you know you can't get rid of. But yeah, I would like to get three galaxies. I think it's really good for this deck. It definitely helps them out. Um, then once I get a chance to, I'm going to get a pair of Korean Archfiend Eccentrics and a Korean pair of uh, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbits, too, of course. Uh, for the traps, we got two Skill Prisoner. Really good card. If your opponent's monster targets a card you control, you can chain this to it, and your opponent's monster effect is negated for the moment. It's not for the whole turn. You gotta make sure that you know that Skill Prisoner is good, yes, but its effect is still kind of relevant for only that monster. 
So whenever it would target the monster, you can use it from the field or graveyard. You can banish it from your graveyard. Not the turn you sent it, though. And you can do the same thing. If your opponent targets a card you control, you can just banish this from the graveyard and make sure that that monster effect is negated. And then, finally, two um, breakthrough skills. This is a Korean breakthrough skill, Ultra. Very sexy. I still need to get uh, another one. I'm probably going to just put these two as Korean breakthrough skills. I'm not going to take this deck to any locals, at least not for tournament purposes. But it's a really fun deck to play. I just usually play it with friends. But yeah, two breakthrough skills because breakthrough is also able to be banished from the graveyard. Alright, so extra deck. Uh, like I said, it's kind of generic. I don't really have any like good rank 4s in here because they're mostly all in my other decks. So don't expect any Exitons or any Castells. Yes, I know Castells were printed, but it's not in here. One Heretic Sun Dragon Overload of Heliopolis. God, that's a mouthful. His effect is still relevant. You can make it with two Bankies. And uh, it's just really there for popping. You don't really need to have it for anything else. And it's pretty generic. One Utopia, no explanation. One Go 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 Golem, personal tech of mine. It's actually working really well. It gives all of your monsters 800 defense. That's why I like it. I don't preferably like it for its other effects. Its other effect is meh, because I don't control any Go 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 monsters. But this guy is pretty good because it buffs up your Banky and it also buffs up any of the Synchro monsters and any Super Heavy Samurai that you control by 800. That buff can mean a lot, just saying. Then, two, Gearging Out X, you can make this guy a lot. I usually, I'm thinking about running three because he's easy to crank out and he is a good searcher. His attack is kind of meh, but again, good searcher. That's all that he's there for. Then for the Synchros, we have one Naturia Beast and one Naturia Barkeon, both here for the same purpose. They're both really good cards, and Naturia Beast is very good right now because a lot of spells more or less running around than traps. Uh, high Speed Roy Kendaba. I mostly use him for his first and second effect. You can banish a machine from your graveyard and then just uh, inflict 500 damage. And if you control no cards, you can special summon this card from your graveyard. Which is very relevant. And he's got 2200 attack, so that's not too bad. Now, the ones that you definitely need to run. Three of. Super Heavy Samurai... Uh, Ogre Shuten Doji. His effect is great. Uh, I love this one. When he's Synchro Summoned and you control no spells and traps, then you could, uh, no spells and traps in your graveyard, you can Harpy's Feather Duster your opponent's side of the field, destroy all of their spells and traps. He can also attack in defense position and he has 25, so very good to run this guy at 3. I definitely say pick yourself up a pair if you're planning to make this deck good. Uh, one Black Rose Dragon, that should be kind of obvious. Three, ulti, it's so amazing. Uh, Super Heavy Sam uh, Super Heavy Samurai Sun Suno, which is the main one you're going to be making a lot. He's a level 10 Synchro Monster, and if you control no spells or traps in your graveyard, you can target, during either player's turn, that's a quick effect, uh, you can target one spell or trap that they have in their graveyard and set it to your side of the field. So you can already imagine uh, the stupidity of the combos. Plus it's got 38 defense. It's very, very huge. There's not a lot of monsters that can get over that. And if you do, if you have the Flutists in the graveyard, you get the breakthrough skills. No monster or card effect is going to target you. So monster effects that don't target pretty much fuck him up. But anything else, you'll probably be safe. So anyway, that's the deck profile. Uh, the card of the night is most definitely Big Banky. He's what makes this deck fun to play, and he's just so good. I'm still trying to get another super from the Astral Pack, and I probably will eventually. This is 13 Dragon Blade, signing off.